Hello everyone, this is Jasmine from Jazz Draws Art and I am back with a new video. This is Inktober week one. As you can see, I've already started my drawing. So for day one, the prompt for Inktober was, I believe, crystal. And I thought about drawing just a regular crystal or trying to make a scene. But I thought I'd make it a little bit more interesting, and I know it's technically more like a gemstone kind of thing. But I decided to draw Harry Potter when he was holding the Philosopher's Stone as a sort of crystal, per se. I just thought it would be a little bit more personal to me just because I love Harry Potter. I've also been rereading the books. It is my favorite book series still to date. So I just thought it would be a nice little nostalgic thing to do and to do something a little different that I haven't really done before. I am not quite the best with inks, but I wanted to do this challenge because it forces you to get better and to try new things and to be more decisive with your lines. So here you can see me trying to use my uh, dip ink pen and it's not quite working with my uh, black India ink. And so it has a bit of more of a warm tone to it. And I decided to take a brush and some water and dilute it and to paint it on. Now know this, this, uh, this paper isn't quite meant for such heavy amounts of wet media. So that's why some spots look a little more blotchy than others. But I decided I was going to go through with it anyway. I'd already started on this paper. So I just continued to go. I am using just some simple Bristol paper. Not very thick though. It's a bit thinner for Bristol. It's not very thick. It's smooth Bristol. It comes in the sheets rather than in a, in a book. So that way I don't have to tear them out and cut them to size. I can just pull them out and use them. They're the same size as printer paper. I want to do a little bit more than just drawing him in and adding shadows. So. You can see here that I'm just doing a light wash over his face and then adding a little bit darker spots where I think he needs it for a little bit of depth. Adding the odd shadow, a little bit more deepening of certain areas, highlighting certain areas, and just doing my best to get everything the way that I wanted it. I'm not quite used to drawing younger people, I guess. I tend to draw more like teenagers or young adults, but I haven't really drawn kids or like preteens that much. So this was a little bit of a different thing for me. I tried to make sure he still looked old enough to be like 11, but not too young that he didn't look as though he was like a little kid. I didn't want him to look like a little kid, but I didn't want him to look too old either. Here I tried a different approach so I wouldn't go too dark at first with a light wash from my markers. They are all water-based markers. That's why I'm doing this and it works. Otherwise, the alcohol base wouldn't do this. Um, I don't have that many different kinds of markers. So I try to stick to black and white where I can. And if I have the right color, then I add color with my color markers. So here I'm using my Tombow brush pens dual tip brush pens and I'm going over top with some details with my white gel pen adding highlights where I think it needs it. I don't want to overdo this piece. I want to make sure that it has enough substance to itself. So just as a little bit of separating Harry from the background I added some red. On to the next day. The next prompt was suit and I thought many different times about different characters or actors or people that I like that wore suits and it just all seemed kind of plain to me. And so I thought what's something that I could do that would be a little bit different than what I usually draw. And I thought, hey, um, what if I did something more old fashioned? And then it came to me and like, oh, I've been re-watching Downton Abbey lately and I really liked Lady Mary's equestrian riding suit. And so I decided to do that for something a little different. It has like the net from the hat over her face and the nice jacket and of course her soft features and so it just gave this piece a little something that 
I don't normally get to do in my pieces, which is just the different time era. It's always fun to play around. I wanted to keep her a little bit more simple, so I made sure I got all my sketches down and some of my heavy shadows, and I just started toning everything, trying to just lay down a base and then add on top and add on top and add on top. That's the safest way to ink. Um, these markers that I'm using are Prismacolor Grayscale Markers in Cool Grays. They, I think there's 15 different kinds of markers. And so I did my best to play around with the values and to add shading where I could without pilling up the paper because again, it's not meant for this much wet media, but it's what I have, so gotta use it. I decided that it wasn't quite dark enough in certain areas, so I went over it with a little bit darker and darker colors each time, and then started adding in black where it was absolutely necessary. I wanted to make sure you could tell the light was hitting her jacket. I really like this piece. It's probably one of my favorites out of the ones I've done so far for week one. some white details with my pen, a little bit of darkening her hair, and on to the next piece. Now this one was a little tricky. The prompt for this day, day three, was vessel. And vessel can mean, when I looked it up, it can mean like a ship. Often it's referred to ships, but you know how some people refer to th other things as vessels. But I wanted it to be something more than just a ship or like a certain ship. I made it a boat to Hogwarts. A lot of my ideas keep coming from Harry Potter. It's probably because I have it on the brain from rereading the books. But still, I thought this would be something I don't normally do. I don't tend to draw backgrounds, especially, uh, especially traditionally. And with markers and fine liners, this is definitely very out of my comfort zone. So I thought I would just try it. It doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of things aren't perfect, so I just went in and started adding, like, blocking out where I wanted certain shadows to be, and it's easier to do with a lighter marker at first, and just lightly go over it as you go with darker and darker ones until you get the look you're looking for. It's also important to make sure you uh, remember where your light spots are going to be, because if you color over that, it's going to be really hard to fix it unless you have like proper ink to go over it. I tried my best to not use paint. As long as you have ink in Inktober, it's fine. You don't have to use solely ink unless you're a purist, I guess. But I just wanted to do this challenge because it's something I don't normally do. It's something fun. It's something that <laughs> a lot of people get excited about. And it's something that artists actually get to participate in and have people excited about art and gets us into the feeling of October. It's just, it's nice to have something where everybody can see and compare what their different ideas were and be like, oh, that's how they interpreted the prompt. And yeah, it's really fun. So here I'm just doing the boat. I wish I had uh, some lighter markers or some better colors because it was hard for me to not make everything really dark. And if it were up to me to do this piece again, I would probably make certain values different and the colors different, but I did the best with what I had. And who knows, maybe I'll redo these pieces that I wasn't so happy with digitally someday so you can see how I wanted them to be. But nonetheless, I carried on and did what I could do. So this is the boat ride that the first year Hogwarts students get to go on when they're going up to the castle. And so I took a brush again and some water in a cup and I just did my best to blend these colors together, the blue so it looked a little bit more wishy-washy and I took some of the colors from my marker tips to do a bit more of like a watercolor look. Now a lot of the colors in the photo reference that I was using had uh, like grayish blues and everything so I really tried to stick to just a few things of 
blue, brown, gray, black, and the odd little bit of yellow. Just so I wouldn't overwhelm the picture with tons of color. So here I'm just going back, adding in some more shadows and depth into the rocks. And it's nighttime, I believe, in the original picture and it's raining. So I just did my best to fill in the spots where it met the water and you'll see I'll do some more blending of that. Again, I'm just going over certain parts in black and deepening my shadows, adding my highlights with my white gel pen. I'm new to using a gel pen. I haven't had one before, but I got it like a few months ago. So it's, it's a nice thing to play around with. Yes, now on to the next day. This prompt was knot, K-N-O-T, tying a knot. You could interpret this many different ways. I thought about engagement rings or like a wedding ceremony. I thought about literally tying a knot, like just drawing a rope <laughs> with a knot. But I, again, I want to interpret things the way that into something that would make me happy or be a little different. Sometimes it's good to stick to just what the prompt is, but I want to make it a little different. So here I decided to do the scene from Karate Kid where Mr. Miyagi ties the bandana onto Daniel LaRusso's head. So that's where the knot is, and it's a bit more of a symbolism of their friendship, you know, tying a knot. <laughs> so I really like the way Mr. Miyagi turned out in this. I, I wish I could have done a little bit better with Daniel, but who knows, maybe next time I draw them, it'll get better but I am happy with Mr. Miyagi at least. He is my favorite character in the movie. So I'm just going back in, adding my dark values and trying to get kind of that black and white comic look from it. And I ended up going in with my grayscale markers once again and just toning it and toning it, taking my time with this one. You can tell I really tried with Mr. Miyagi to get it right because he has a certain type of skin tone that's different in the shadow and the light and the way it hits his skin it's different so I wanted that to reflect his bone structure as well with the shaping that I did to the face. It's always easier to make someone look more like them when you can shade because you can use that as an excuse to hide your line work because getting somebody's likeness right off the bat with line work is really hard. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's really hard. And some people are really good at it and not great at painting. And some people are the other way around and some people are both. But I find it easier to fix my mistakes with shading. It is harder to do it on paper though and not digitally because you can't start over. So it just gets darker and darker. So yeah, I really tried my best to keep it true to what the picture was. I found it actually kind of difficult to draw the checkered shirt that Daniel was wearing so I tried to simplify it a little bit by just doing the stripes, trying to get the folds in the clothing, and then going back over it with my fine liner for extra lines for the outsides of each of the patterns. I added some more detail to Miyagi's hair and his clothes, some highlights highlights on Daniel and next piece. Now this prompt is very straightforward. I decided to go more straightforward with it just because I haven't drawn a bird in a long time and the prompt was Raven. I thought about different things like The Raven by Edward Edgar Allan Poe. Sorry. And I'd also thought about like different characters I know named Raven, but I, again, I love birds. I really do. And I thought it'd be fun to this time try drawing a bird and seeing what I could do with it to make it a little bit more special than I normally would draw them. I haven't drawn one in a long time. I used to draw them all the time in my notebooks and my sketchbooks. And so this is the first time in months that I've drawn one and I, I'm actually pretty happy with it and how it came out and I found my brush pen that came with this pack that blends the color so that helped me a little bit. I tried to do a little bit of dry brushing because some of my markers were running out of ink so it gives it more texture but I wanted to make sure that it didn't look like it was like 
you know, grungy. I wanted to keep it so you could still tell what everything is and had texture, but still nice, dark, shiny feathers in the body. So here, I'm just trying to add texture to everything. Give everything a little bit of shine, but still keep its darkness and layering on the different shades of gray and black and blue, adding the stripes, and it's just standing on a little piece of a knotted tree. Add some dimension, add a little bit of scribbles and texture, add some highlights to this. And next one is, this is my favorite piece I've done. Um, and the reason I went with it is because of the name he has in the comics as well. This prompt was Spirit. I had thought about doing Spirit the Horse from the movie, the animated movie. I thought about drawing a straight up ghost, like a spirit. I thought about drawing like a Victorian woman in her night dress outside with like a see-through texture, but I am so into comics and as soon as I was thinking about it, I'm like, Spirit of Vengeance, Ghost Rider. I love Ghost Rider, I love his design, and what better than for October, Halloween season, than a flaming skeleton in leather with chains on a motorcycle. I, I've always loved Ghost Rider, I love the movie with Nicolas Cage, I liked it when I saw him in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I love his design, his concept, everything, his pennant stare. Oh, I love his powers. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite superheroes, anti-heroes, whatever you want to call him. But I had so much fun with this piece. I really just went at it and kept adding and kept going and doing my best to just try and teeter between comical art, like comic art and realistic, and just kept going and adding texture and lines and making him more gnarly and trying to add more to the flames and to the skull and to the jacket. And I just went all out with this piece. So I did some light toning with my lightest grayscale marker. And then I went back and did another layer of it, just a little bit more. I did the odd piece other places, but I really want to focus on getting the head right. So here I added just some light where the light would hit my jacket on and then filled the rest in with black and so you could see that I could just shape my shadows and light from there. I wanted to keep it super simple with the jacket because I didn't want it to take away from his face. So you just see like the odd bit of highlight, the spike on his jacket, and the collar. This part took a little bit of time because I had to fill around the edges. I wanted the background to be black so you could really get the full effect of the fire from his skull glowing and out of his jacket glowing and the inside of his mouth is glowing. I just, I could gush about this character's design. It's one of my favorites. He's just, has the perfect combination of cool, creepy, like he's so interesting to look at. Everything about him is so cool. So once I got all that filled in, I went back and started adding the light little bits where I wanted some depth in it and kept going in with some cross hatching marks, some marks making, adding more and more to make him look creepier, angrier, <laughs> more crazy, whatever I could to make him have more life. I really love how this one turned out. I added some more depth and brush strokes to the flame so you could get more of the texture effect to it. And then I went back in with my white gel pen and added my highlights. Finally on the last piece, unfortunately this one's my least favorite. Uh, maybe I'll do it again someday to do her proper justice, but the prompt was fan. I thought about drawing like a person who's a fan of something, like a fan club. And then I thought about drawing just the unique hand fan or a regular fan when it's hot. But I thought, why not do something simpler, a little bit easier, and to dedicate to one of my favorite Disney characters, Mulan. So I did her when she's with the matchmaker and she has her fan and she has the cricket in her mouth. Now this one, I thought, oh, I have the right colors. I can, I can color her in. 
my colors were, once they actually showed up on paper, the way they came out is much different than the cap color. Always test your markers on the kind of paper you're going to use because you can get the result I got, which isn't terrible, but it is blotchy and the colors are not quite the right shades that I needed them to be. But I, I did what I could and again, hopefully I can do another piece to do her proper justice someday because I grew up loving the music from this movie, loving this movie, and I still watch it today with my family. Alright, make sure to check out all these pictures. The full pictures will be posted onto my Instagram and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!